Welcome to the Inspectations Podcast, hosted by Justin Starbird, CEO of the Abley Group. In business, one of the most difficult tasks a leader must do is find a way to inspect what they expect. Too often, great businesses fail or managers lose their way because they were operating based on expectations that they had not yet inspected. The Inspectations Podcast brings together business leaders from all industries to talk about best practices, innovation, leadership, and business development. You're listening to the Inspectations Podcast. Here's your host, Justin Starbird. Welcome back to this episode of Inspectations, the podcast by the Abley Group. My name is Justin Starbert, and I get to welcome in a good friend of mine, Russ Fordyce, Senior Director of Content Marketing for Infinera. Russ, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, you know, we've been friends for a long time. I don't think we've ever done one of these shows together. No, we haven't. Well, yeah. Not for ourselves, anyway. We've done it for other people, and we've talked to, about a whole host of different topics on other people's stuff, but never for ourselves. No, and probably never recorded. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably a good thing. Some of the things we talk about, right? I mean, so that's okay. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm excited to have the chance to to talk to you today about you know what we do professionally in, in marketing, um, and you have a pretty neat job at a company called Infinera. Uh, what is Infinera? So Infinera is developing the latest technologies for the optical networking industry. So basically, if you think about your internet connections. Uh, somewhere outside your house is a piece of fiber optics and on the end of that fiber optics is a laser. And so all those lasers are what are what we're making, um, all the boxes with the fiber optic lasers in it so that you can do the fiber optic networking. That's pretty, that's pretty exciting and, and sounding uh, very complicated. It is very complicated, in it, but it's, it's something everybody understands the problem, which is we're all in need of more and more bandwidth. And so this is the way to get more and more bandwidth is to innovate at that optical layer. Um, and so it's, it's interesting to tell those stories as, as, as we do about, you know, the innovations and how things work and, mm -hmm. um, and really getting at that and telling that Infinera story. Well, that is your role. You are the senior director of content marketing. What does that actually encompass and, and what do you, what do you do all day? <laughs> well, so I, I, part of my job is to manage all the content outbound. So whatever marketing content we're developing for audiences is to kind of coordinate that and to, and to develop strategy around it. Um, and so along with that comes campaign management. And so we do a lot of management, a lot of work around managing campaigns, all the various components of campaigns that we're running um, throughout the year. So I do a little bit, a lot of campaign management and a lot of kind of herding of cats and all of our content creators uh, sure. at Infinera. Is it difficult to pull that together? You say herding the, the cats and, and being able to, you know, pull it into one place and in one direction. Is it difficult to tell the story of what you guys do to your audience? It is because it's a very, very technical, at the layer we're at, it's a very, very technical sale. And so you're talking about how light works and how lasers work and the theoretical and real limitations of, of those, you know, those technologies. And you, and so get telling that story in a way that meets the audience is really kind of the, the, the secret sauce is you really have to know where you are in the sales cycle for a piece of content. Who's it aimed at? You know, is it aimed for the CEO of a big service provider or is it, you know, aimed at a director of technology for, you know, a data center provider. Um, those are very different stories, very different roles um, inside a company. And so we're really making sure that we know when in the buying cycle and where in the buying cycle, um, you know, our content's going to be most useful. Sure. So with that, uh, knowing what's useful and, and even what to put out, is it difficult or are you finding uh, challenges that you face each day to like distribute that and, and actually get that out? Well, the B2B market's challenging uh, just for distribution of messages anyway. It's, it's been dominated by email for so long um, that I think that's still our number, one of our number one channels just is, is you know, website and email. Um, the, you know, social networking is taking, taking off. It's very good awareness platform, not a very good, uh, you know, direct action 
platform. We're, we're not finding great kind of, you know, uh, direct sales or direct lead gen from social media. We're getting lots of views and lots of reads as, and that's really what we want. Our sales cycle is very long and uh, you know, our, our challenge is awareness of our solutions and, and understanding of, you know, kind of where they fit in your network. Yeah, I'd imagine where they fit in the network and then actually how to apply them, no? Yeah, the application's, I think, a little bit easier because we're talking to optical engineers. And so they, they, know about the, they know about how stuff works, but they don't know the intricacies of how our stuff works and how it works a little bit better than the other guys or a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, all of them, yeah, all of them have their own unique applications. And so getting at those is, is, uh, is super important. You talked a little bit about the challenges of, of B2B and, and how that's a you know, difficult market in and of itself. And then you, you talked about the different uh, pieces of content that you've got to put out there in order to you know, hit the right person in the right you know, part of the sales funnel. Uh, you know, how do you work with your team to actually create goals and determine even what those goals could or should be for, for each piece of content? Yeah, well, we're, we're focused on um, launching new product uh, into the market and making sure we have awareness on our current product. Um, that's you know, kind of job number one. Um, and then what we're doing is going through and uh, kind of developing a template for what every product should have, right? Every product should have you know, a two-page overview sheet, a presentation. And so we spent a lot of time when Infinera and Corian merged making sure that we had those stories all kind of told um, and making sure we had content from, from kind of all those perspectives. And then it was, how does, what are, what's changing in the industry um, and what's changing in Infinera to tell a compelling story. And so there, there are, you know, lots of compelling stories around 5G and, um, you know, the internet of things and the, all the content like Netflix and Amazons of the world gobbling up bandwidth. So it's, you know, the landscape is changing quite a bit and everybody's having to deal with those changes. It's not just the, the changers. Sure. Well, not to get into too much technical detail, but how do the needs of, you know, my Netflix account or me logging onto Facebook or buying something on Amazon, you know, actually affect bandwidth and then the need for the Infinera products to go, you know, into the marketplace? Yeah. So our, our products give more capacity on those lines. And so when you need more capacity, you have to upgrade your, your equipment. And so for the companies like Netflix that are going through tremendous, and, and Facebook's, tremendous booms in technology and in, in bandwidth, they're looking for ways to improve their customer experience and to lower their costs. And so for a lot of companies, that means moving away from this kind of centralized data center architecture where you, you, know, you have a big data center or a few big data centers. Um, and they're moving into more local data centers or more local content you know, storage areas so that that experience is better for the end customer. And so if you think about it, that bandwidth is moving from that core network, that kind of center going into the data center, and now it's being distributed all over the world. And so those, the bandwidth needs are still there, they're just moving. As, as so cool. a lot of the service providers kind of move their assets. Yep. Content providers. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, uh, it sounds so, when you say it, it sounds so simple, but of, of course there's so much that goes into it. And so it, it, it's so interesting, uh, you know, yeah, to, well, to learn more about it. I, I was on a call the other day with one of our content creators, one of our solution marketing folks, um, all about Subsea. And one of the large content providers that we deal with um, won't say who, I don't think we're allowed to say who, but uh, they know, you know, by millisecond, how much it costs them uh, if there's delay in, in serving you content, because they know they can get in so many ads or, or, you know, in a, in a given amount of time. And so they know if there's latency on that connection, anything they can do to speed up that content being delivered to your eyeballs means more money for them. Yeah. That's wild. Well, I, you know, I certainly feel fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with you, your team, and uh, Infinera in general on a couple of different projects. We've done, you know, some of the animation and explainer videos with you, 
uh, to you know help uh, effectively tell that story. You know where where does animation and and some of the explainer videos you know fall in the sales cycle for you and the team? Yeah, they're really important for us because if you think about it, we're we've got new technologies that have never been thought of before. We have a one called XR <laughs> Optics, right? And it's literally getting a single kind of you know being able to split a laser into multiple segments so that you can shoot that laser basically to multiple places at the same time. And so that's, that's gonna fundamentally change how networking works, how optical networking works. It's gonna look a lot more like the IP world than it does the kind of the optical world now where everything is point to point. You now have this point to multi-point and you can't tell that story uh, you know, to, the, to the CEO of a company uh, when that when that person's not an optical engineer, and so <laughs> we have to find ways to really explain it in layman's terms, and so they understand the impact of the technology, um, and, and that's what those explainer videos have really helped us do. They've gotten tremendous uh, tremendous feedback uh, from everybody that sees them. It's because it's. It's just that we spend two or three minutes just really explaining how something works in very layman terms. And you know, I know uh, we've we've done a, a few series of them uh, with you. What has it been like to you know work with our team and and uh, and you know now be able to count on those results? Yeah, I mean it's it's great knowing that uh, now, especially that when we go into one of these, we know what we're going to get out of it. Um, and that only comes through doing multiples, but, um, I think we're on four or five or six now. (laughs) And, um, it just, it's, it's fun to, it's fun, especially with that team to, to see their creativity come out. Cause what we put into it, we, you know, we're giving them a script and some ideas on storyboard and they, they come at it with a real fresh perspective and bring that kind of, um, naivete to it that, you know, they're not experts in optical networking. So it's, they, they're even helping us kind of make it more useful yeah. uh, just just by them taking the ownership of that video and and really making it their own. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and it, it's been a lot of fun to uh, to see them grow too into this. Uh, it's kind of the same team that works on your your uh, projects. And, and so that's been a lot of fun. Where are you seeing, you know, more goal accomplishments as a result of that? Is it, you know, they see it and then they, they fill out a form or, you know, your guys get calls, you know, how do you, how do you see results uh, come out of those? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Cause again, we're, we're really not in about lead generation or anything like that. It's a, it's a, you know, year two, three year sales cycle for some of these deals. And you're talking about you know millions of dollars usually, um, and so it's um, it's not your traditional you know kind of approach. We're we're really focused on it. Number one is enabling our sales team, right? I mean, if we if we we've got to enable our sales team with the materials they need to get in the door and to showcase products um, in a meaningful way, and so we spend a lot of time doing that. Um, we you know we spend uh, a good amount of time speaking, you know, with teams and with customers and at customer events. Um, and we've really found that to be useful is, is the customer event marketing yep. and getting, getting into the customers. Um, but you guys just bring a sense of order to the, to the whole process of creation. So it's um, when I, you know, I, we, we, we run a pretty lean and small team. And so it's, um, it's always great when somebody comes on board and just handles stuff and you don't have to give them too much direction. They understand what the what the job is and what the need is, and and go off and get it done. Sure. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, uh, and and thank you for the opportunity to to keep working with Infinera, you and your team. I know you know we have some other projects coming up uh, related to video production later in the year, and and then some more animated uh, projects that, that come up yeah. more quarterly. So, so big question for you then: What is next uh, for Infinera? What what do we um, expect to see out of you guys now? Yeah, well, we're continuing to evolve the video story. We're getting a lot of traction on social media and seeing really good results on social media with the use of video. And so we're, we're trying to explore more what we can do with video. Um, Really again, more in that early phase of uh, early phase of the sales funnel of just building awareness of who we are and what we do and, 
uh, and that we're different. And so more video, more social media, um, and lots more of in-person events with customers. Thank God we're getting back to in-person. Yeah, events. I'll tell you what, I was at a, an event last week in, in California and it just felt nice to, to see people uh, feel okay about shaking their hands and then, and then sanitizing maybe. But, um, <laughs> you know, it was, just, it was just nice to see some, you know, familiar faces, some folks you haven't seen in a while and then actually get to meet new people because the other thing that I think that's been crazy with all this has been the moves, right? Everyone call it the great, Great resignation of 2021. Well, you know, that means they mostly started new jobs. And so to see some of those faces at new places has also been pretty cool. So uh, what are some of the shows that you guys are doing this year? Uh, there, well, we just got done with the uh, OFC show, which is the optical fiber conference or something like that. It, 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 it's in San Diego. And that was our big show. Uh, that was about 60 or 70% full from, you know, 2019 numbers. And uh, but we had a tremendous, tremendous showing there. We we were doing live demos in the booth of our technology and uh, had a very unique style booth inside of uh, inside of the convention center. And so it was it was a big hit. We had lots of lots of customers come through, which was great. And and uh, we actually had meeting rooms inside of our booth. It was a pretty big booth, uh, and it was packed. They, you know, all day. Everybody's everybody's wanting to shake hands and meet and see stuff in real, see, see stuff in person. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, uh, get to hold it in your hands, you know, shake it around to move things. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't even matter. It's those squishy balls. It's just, it's, it, you know, to have something now, I think has been great. Yeah. Well, Russ, I, you know, I appreciate you stopping by today. I appreciate yeah. you uh, saying so many uh, nice things about the Able Group and also, um, you know, to learn more about what actually, what Infinair does. Uh, it, it's it's really neat because it's one of those things you you flip your computer on or you turn Netflix on and and it's there. You don't necessarily think about how it gets there. Yeah, it's, it is an interesting space to be in right now. I bet. I bet. And it's only getting, you know, I'm certainly uh, more competitive, but uh, you guys still uh, continue to innovate and bring new products forward. So that's pretty cool to see too. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of change in that kind of the unseen stuff, but uh, by most consumers, but there's going to be a lot of change in that industry in the next few, few years. Great. Well, you've been listening to the latest episode of the Inspectations Podcast powered by the Able Group. You have been listening to the Inspectations Podcast. On behalf of your host, Justin Starbird, and our guests today, thank you for listening. To learn more about the Inspectations Podcast, our guest, or the Abley Group, please visit us at www.ablegroup.com. Be sure to keep inspecting what you are expecting.